Hello and welcome to Photographic Connections, the podcast where we create connection to self, nature and others through the art of photography. My name is Kim Grant, the founder of Photographic Connections and your host for this podcast. And today I'm absolutely delighted to welcome Norman McCloskey onto the podcast. Norman is a landscape photographer based in County Kerry in Ireland. We speak about his deep connection with his local area and how he's gone on to not only photograph it, but also run a very successful gallery business in the area. We also speak about his love for creating books of his images, as he inspires you to do the same with yours, as it not only gives you a great outlet for showcasing your images, but it also gives you a sense of purpose. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Norman McCloskey. Hi Norman, thank you so much for coming on to the podcast this week. I'm really looking forward to speaking with you because you've got such a deep connection with County Kerry. It's a part of Ireland that, that I've been to. It's so, so beautiful. And I love to speak with people who have got deep connections with their local area because I feel like there's a really special element to that. So I'm really looking forward to delving into that with you today. But before we do, I wondered if you could go way back to the beginning of your journey and share what got you into photography in the first place. Uh, sure. Well, it's it's lovely to be here. Thanks for inviting me on. Um, I guess like a lot of people, there's kind of two strands to it. It was there as a, uh, when I was a kid, it was kind of tapping me on the shoulder, but I never really consciously engaged with it. Um, I was you know, very keen on taking pictures with the family camera and I actually won a camera when I was 10. It was the only raffle prize I think I've ever won in my life. But it didn't really become a conscious thing until... I had um, turned 21 and I'd left, uh, I'd moved out of home down to this lovely little small town in the country where I live now. Um, it was quite a profound experience and uh, I guess it had kind of opened me up to the possibility of suddenly having, you know, uh, a change in my life. Because at that time I was pretty rudderless. I had no real ambition or any clue what I was going to do. And photography kind of came along by accident. I was helping a friend move house one day and I was carrying out this large flight case looking, you know, silver box that I was kind of curious about. And I asked him what, it, what was in it. And before he'd even answered, I had it down on the ground and I was opening it. And inside was this pristine Canon FTB a 35 mil camera and I'd never really seen the likes of it before I'd you know only on movies maybe or something but I was absolutely transfixed with it and uh, I asked him if I could borrow it and I remember he, I, he said what do you want to borrow it for and he always likes me that he says I said I don't know um, I just I just had to have this thing and a couple of days later I put a roll of film into it and headed out on my bike and just started taking pictures of the landscape um, I had never done anything like it before. I had, I had, you know, no conscious idea that that landscape photography was even a thing, because this would have been in 1990. And I loved it, and I loved it even more when I saw the results that came back. And you know, you had these the little prints that you got from the lab maybe a week or two later. Um, I became an avid amateur photographer for about a year and a half until I decided I wanted to take it a bit more seriously. Uh, so I went and studied photography. I went back to art, uh, to college, to art college. And that was a, that was a bit of a huge move again for me because it meant leaving my lovely idyllic home that I'd set up down in, in Kerry and go back to college to be a broke student for two years. And I was really broke. Um, but it was great. I loved it. And then I, after college, I, I worked a little bit in the industry as a, a, an assistant to a commercial photographer. Uh, that work was a bit, it was fantastic. It was really exciting and it was, it was interesting, but it was a bit haphazard. You know, one day you'd have work, next day you wouldn't. It was, you couldn't really plan. And uh, I kind of wanted a bit of, bit more security. I was heading into like, I think turning 26. And so I took a job in a sports photography agency. Um, and thought I'll try that for a little bit but I ended up staying there for 18 years um, and quite soon into that I realized that I didn't want to be a sports photographer but I seemed to have an aptitude for organizing things and running the, 
the business and seeing what needed to be done. So I started running the picture desk and then I set up a kind of commercial division of the the company. Um, and it was really great. It gave me the time and space to do my own work. Uh, but crucially, about three years into it, it gave me the opportunity to relocate back to Kerry and work from home, which was amazing. Um, and I did that for, you know, another 15 years until eventually the the strains and that working relationship and the distance and everything started to show. And I think it just it just ran its course um, and I kind of needed I needed to get out of there. I needed a change, but I didn't really know what I was going to do. I was felt quite stuck um, because I'd kind of played all my cards and moved down here. Um, and then one day the opportunity at the gallery just literally walked in the door with news from my wife and we thought about it over a weekend and I just decided, yeah, okay, we're going to try it. And it was a huge risk because I had, uh, a, you know, the job I was in was extremely well paid. I had loads of benefits. I, I had the comfort of being my own boss. It was, and I thought I'll never replace this, um, but the gallery worked uh, from day one. I was really surprised and very quickly I was able to part ways with the company and, you know, I've never looked back since really. Um, and it's been a, a wonderful uh, experience just being able to, you know, re-engage fully with the landscape on, on basically every level now, apart from it being a passion and something that I love to just go out on. It's now something that I'm completely um, immersed in. Um, in in all aspects, and I'm very very fortunate to be able to make a living out of it now, which is mm. kind of my dream. Um, so I I do count myself very lucky in that respect. It's wonderful because you've been into so many different realms of photography in many respects, with the commercial side and the sports, and of course going back now to your absolute love of of landscapes. How did you find actually studying photography? Because most people I speak to have had a very um, you know, an interest in photography and they often end up being self-taught and they're just going to go out there and connect with nature and build up that connection. But I'd love to hear about what it's actually like to study photography. Did that really set you up, do you feel, for, for your career in the industry? Um, not really, because I went to art college and it was a real shock and I had no clue really of what was going to be involved. I mean, this was back, I think the course started in 94, um, you know, pre-internet pre 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 information on anything being available you know you were lucky if you got a, a prospectus posted out to you in the course so i went there completely blind and i went there with a passion for landscape photography and not much else to be honest with you um and all of a sudden i was thrown into this art college setting which was you know quite bizarre at the start i really didn't know what was going on and all these you know really highbrow conceptual ideas and you have to study other areas of art and so on. So it was a bit of a shock to begin with you, to be honest with you, and I almost quit. Uh, I, I, it was just too much, and I thought, this is not what I signed up for. But then I, I slowly started to see, you know, how all of these other areas of photography and these other influences and, and learning about it, uh, ways of seeing and so on could help me. Um, and it, it just imbued a love of photography that just opened my open my mind to every other side of it so before long I was absolutely loving it and I think one of the main things that I really enjoyed was the freedom we had and the equipment that we had at our disposal um, before I joined before I started college I had built a really rudimentary dark room in the front room of my little house that I was sharing and I had to take it apart at night because it was my bedroom um, but now I was in a college with these huge dark rooms and studios and we were allowed to take cameras out at the weekends and so on. So I really, I really enjoyed it. And I have to say, um, it doesn't set you up for a job because you go out of there with this portfolio that, you know, people in the commercial world, they just laugh at because it's all these conceptual projects you've worked on. Um, but it did set me up with an absolute love for and an understanding and the building blocks of a real deep understanding of, of areas of photography and an appreciation of it. Um, so I, I look, I use that now quite a lot and I can see it. Um, it also, we also had a quite a good technical training. So, you know, we learned how to um, develop and print uh, color, you know, C41. So that was, that was a huge thing. 
Um, so when I went from that, from a darkroom to a digital darkroom, I had the, the basic building blocks and the understanding of it. Um, so, you know, it was it was great. I mean, the college, the course that I went to was only a two year one. It's since gone on to be a degree and I would love to go back and do further studies. I don't know if I'll ever have time, but um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. And, and I'm surprised how much I use what I learned, you know, 15, 20 years ago uh, today. Um, so, you know, I can appreciate lots of different areas of photography from it, which is great. Mm, brilliant. It certainly sounds like it gave you a good scope of, of things and a chance to try different things. And I guess work out maybe who you were, but you initially went in there and you were kind of interested in the landscapes. And that's definitely what you've gone back to. But with all this knowledge and information that you've gained along the way, which which is beautiful. And speaking about your landscapes, as I mentioned at the beginning, your main passion is photographing your local county of, of Kerry in, in Ireland. It's such a beautiful place. What do you think it is about your home area that in, that inspires you so much? Yeah, I mean, it, look, it, it's it it means a huge amount to me. Um, it I've quite a profound connection to it, and I think I suppose it, the building, you know, the early kind of connection I made was when I moved here, and, and it had such a profound effect on me just simply by the move. I grew up in a city. I grew up in a, you know. A working class estate in the city where every house looked the same and you know um it, like life wasn't that interesting and all of a sudden i moved to this you know incredibly beautiful part of the country where every window you look out at has this amazing view of some sort or other whether it's the mountains or the sea um and that that in itself made me want to just stay here and and open my eyes to it so Straight away, the connection was with the landscape first. The photography then followed on from it. Um, and it's just grown over the years. It, it, it's been a kind of a reason to, to, even when I was in college and I was living away from here, to come back here all the time. Um, it's a fantastic way to have like, explored the place and got to know it um, by just simply of the virtue of, you know, what you're doing today is you're heading out by yourself and you're heading into that valley and, you know, you're going to explore and... You know, you're doing it uh, through your camera, which is amazing. Um, I mean, it's a very, it's a very special place to me on, on a lot of levels. I'm quite a nostalgic person, um, and uh, probably hopelessly so at times. And I, I kind of, I, I look at places and I just have so many connections through just memories of experiencing times there before that uh, it's, it's actually quite comforting when you go out into a landscape that you know so well and are so familiar with and then you see it change and you discover new aspects of it um so i really enjoy that aspect of it um i really enjoy you know working in a place that i've no got to know intimately um and i feel in many ways that you know it's a kind of a reciprocal relationship um I I I feel in some ways that I'm paying homage to this amazing place that has given me so much and it just keeps giving back to me then. Um, the area that I work in for the last 30 years is quite small compared to most landscape photographers and the breadth they cover. Um, but yet I've never gotten bored and I've never been lost for a subject matter. Um, and uh, I've never, you know, been at a loss for inspiration to work in. So it's yeah, it's it's just one of those ones that keeps growing and getting kind of more, I suppose, profound and intense at times. But with that, I think, comes an almost another level of clarity. Um, I am getting a little bit of an itch to travel and work outside the areas. And I do, I do now regularly go up the west coast of Ireland, which is another place that I have a real connection to, and Connemara. Um, and I've just come back from my first overseas trip in... 14 years for photography so um yeah but still the connection here is just quite strong and i think it's going to go for a long time mm. connection is so important isn't it because when we have that connection we can really feel into a landscape and a location and it helps us to 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 really create our images in, in many sense and and there's it says on your instagram that photography is about connection and emotion and place for you so that emotional connection to your landscape is very important in your work isn't it yeah absolutely i think i think without it um 
I don't know, without it, you're just, you're just a man with a camera, I think. And uh, for me, my work has never been about, you know, technical brilliance or one-upmanship on anyone else or ta-da, I'm the first guy here to do this uh, or, you know, constantly going out and trying techniques or about equipment. It's just simply about going out and experiencing the landscape and seeing if, you know, if I if I make that connection and if I have, um, you know, if I have those kind of that emotive uh, feeling when I'm there and, you know, to an image that I make and if it's still there when I've made the image and if it's still there when I'm looking at it on screen a week later or, you know, two weeks later or a year later, then that's what it's about for me. Um, it's I, I kind of really keep it simple um, and I believe that's just you know that's that's my work it's not you know i've i've obviously become competent in different areas over the years but it's it's not always about um you know 100 percent technical perfection in an image or it's not necessarily about drama or the epic views or anything like that it, yeah, a lot of my work is made five minutes from my house and you know, very nondescript places that people just drive by every day. Uh, and I love that. I love seeing the beauty of this, you know, the simple beauty of nature and those stillness. And, you know, some of those images are in my gallery. People come and ask me where they are. And I just, you know, tell them that's just, you know, two minutes from my house. <laughs> you know, they, they want this epic story of you, you know, paddling out to islands all the time and climbing mountains and so on and sometimes I just look out my window and I go oh, look that's nice um and I walk a few minutes and there you go um mm -hmm. so and and that's you know that I think having that um it's it's not a very easy thing to explain and it's 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 not a very quantifiable thing but it's just an element that's in images and I think sometimes when I'm when I'm looking at people who come into my gallery and they buy my work, I'm always, I just think it's always the maddest thing, really. Still, it's I'm still not used to it. Um, I sometimes ask them, you know, why are, why are you choosing that one? And they can't explain it either. But it just comes down to feelings and an emotion. Um, and if you can get that in an image, and if if you can get a little bit of, uh, across of the photographer and the fact that, you know, uh, if, if, if a feeling can translate from you through an image to the viewer, I think that's, that's you know, you're, you're on the right track. And certainly that's a big part of my work, I think. Yeah. I think it's so beautiful that you put this emotion and this feeling into your imagery and you have this space to share it with people. I think you're the first photographer I've spoken to who has a gallery. I mean, it, it must just be amazing to have that space to not only showcase your work, but as you say, to have people come in and connect with it. And then for some people to love an image enough to go on and buy it, it must be such a, a beautiful experience. How do you feel having the gallery has really... I guess helped you with your photography because you must see things a bit differently now that you're always having kind of your work displayed and you're getting this interaction with people. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, overall, it's it's been the most positive and reaffirming uh, experience. It's it's there's no two ways about it. It is really lovely if it works. I mean, I I know people who've tried it and it's a real downer if it doesn't work mm -hmm. and if your work doesn't sell, but I've just been hugely fortunate. Um, the, you know, very little negatives, you know, and, and you kind of learn to deal with them. You do get the odd person that's coming in, the, the pixel peepers who are just trying to see the quality of your prints or, you know, they just don't see the work. But I mean, I joke to my friends, you know, that, that you know, sometimes that I sit there all day and people just come in and tell me how amazing I am. And it's just, you know, I don't take it that seriously, but it is. It's it's lovely to have people come in and admire your work. Um, we we kind of get a bit blasé to it, to be honest with you, and I try not to. I mean, I'm personally not in the gallery myself anymore for the last year or year and a half, but I do try and go in and do a couple of days, um, you know, in a week or a few days in a month. Um, and it's lovely to see that interaction with people. It, it's... It's actually really beneficial to see how people view your work mm. and what they're drawn towards and 
what they react towards because there are times when you know I'll have an image that I really really like and I'll be really excited about it and I'll you know put it you know pride of place in the gallery and everyone will just nobody will see it and it's it's it, I found that kind of experiment to be quite interesting over the years uh seeing what people like and so on it doesn't affect how I work it doesn't affect um what I choose to photograph the the big question I always get is you know do you shoot for the gallery or does the gallery you know I I I I do neither like my 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 work is is all centered around my book projects which is a really nice way of feeding work into the gallery mm. um so the work that appears in the gallery I, I'd say 95% of the time uh maybe two or three times during the year I'll have a specific image that I'll go and photograph because it's something I want to do and in the back of my mind if it if it works I think uh yeah I'll put that in the gallery but in general it's 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 a lovely you know experience to to have your work up there I'm very proud of that we've made it from nothing to we're in our ninth year um mm. the business has grown you know it's grown exponentially every year and you know we i i'm just shipping all over the world and it's it's re it's really really good um and there's no other way but that that has to be a reaffirming thing for you it gives you a sense of it gives you a sense of confidence as well in your work um you have to be careful with a few things you know you you, you obviously don't let it go to your head um but it's interesting in that I'm not dealing with photographers every day. You know, photographers aren't judging my work. It's just regular people who come in and they don't even know it's a photo gallery when they come in. They just see something in the window and they walk in and they find themselves. And I'd say the vast majority of the people who buy work from us have never bought photography before. They have bought some art, but never photography. So it's always a first time thing for most of them. Um, so it's really interesting and it's it's lovely to meet um to meet people who are willing to actually hand over their hard earned cash mm. for your work and they want it on their wall and you know we get emails and letters and messages from people when they receive their the prints and frame pieces and put them up on their wall and they're they're just delighted and I still think that's just a really lovely thing um so I count myself very very fortunate to 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 have that um and you have this real world real life feedback loop um and i think it's it, it's much more real than than social media it's it's it it's much more beneficial and it can actually it, it shows you a lot more we've had people who would be very dismissive of some images and they'd love other ones we'd have people who've come in and have reacted to everything i've had we've had people come into the gallery and they've ended up in tears which is always a, a weird one um and then you see how you know the re interaction even with couples how they differ you know some people like dark and moody stuff some people will only like the the brighter more colorful work um so it does it's if you pay attention um you can learn an awful lot very quickly um, but as I said, the important thing for me is to not to let it influence uh, how I work and not to have the gallery in my head constantly when I'm out in the landscape working. Um, it would just never work for me if I did that. Um, and I, you would end up with just something far removed from what I have. Um, but overall, a hugely positive thing. Um, and I hope it continues. Yeah, it's brilliant to speak with somebody who's been so successful with prints and with a gallery because I think that's one thing many photographers struggle with is is the print side, you know, like pricing a print, giving your your images that value and also finding people that, that would like to purchase your prints because often other artistic realms, you know, like painting and things, people are seem to be quite prepared often to spend money on artistic pieces. But I find just through speaking to other people that sometimes photography, there can be a bit more of a, a difficulty. So I love the fact that you've been so successful in this and with a gallery that on you know a normal I guess high street because obviously the high street mm -hmm. is you know something that's um suffering in many places so it's so beautiful to hear that despite 
what the trend is in many places you you've succeeded that and you're yeah been such a success it's wonderful yeah thanks i mean it, it like location is actually important um mm. I, I i'm very fortunate in that i think there's a little secret ingredient to having something like um you know any art gallery or anything that's basically not a necessary purchase for people to make that they, it's just your disposable income and it's about um, being in the right area for starters and then it can come down to the very small margins of being what part of town you're in and then there's a lot of elements of of how you choose to uh, display your work how you present mm -hmm. it how you price it how you are actually in the space itself and as much as we don't like to dwell on it as much as as much as I don't like to dwell on it you know at the end of the day you're you're a business there's an element of retail in it so you have to you have to be mindful of the people who come in and and we learned very quickly i mean i had a background i worked in the hospitality industry for 10 years part time you know through college and before it um my experience in dealing with this in the sports photography area where I was basically selling our images all day long that that helped um and I suppose doing it at a time when in life when i was I had a lot of life experience and was kind of ready for it also helped um but um yeah it's it's it it, it it's great um I think a lot of photographers it's the one thing they do struggle with, which is selling prints. Um, I see, it's funny from my point of view, I can look at someone's work uh, or their website or how they're presenting it and spot the mistakes very quickly. Mm. But there's, you know, there's, I suppose it's this common thing that is with a lot of photographers, you know, once they're competent and once their work is good, that they feel they have to be selling prints and they, they put a, a pressure on themselves. Whereas, mm -hmm. I don't, I, you know, I, I would prefer to probably see less of it. Um, there's a few photographers I know who I've actually even approached and given them the opportunity to show work in the gallery and they're not interested. And I just think that's incredibly refreshing. Um, mm -hmm. I think it can be a little bit of a a knockback when someone goes to the trouble of creating a brand new website and they put it up and they price all their prints and then there's no sales and they're wondering yeah. you know is it my work and it, it's not it's never about the work um because there's a lot better photographers out there than me producing stunning work that um that won't sell prints and it's it's not necessarily about that it's just that you're not you're not um, pu putting them in front of the right people and mm. the right people who view your work are generally photographers. Um, and photographers don't buy prints. <laughs> so that's, that's just, I mean, they'll, photographers are great for buying books and they're buy, buying calendars and, you know, they'll support, e we will support each other on that level. But, mm. um, you know, the mistake a lot of the time people make is you know I've got 10,000 followers online 2,000 people like my every image I put up um, you know I'm doing well I'm flying at this and everyone wants to know me but you know most of them are photographers and when they go to sell prints it's a very different I've had very very high profile photographers you know ask me about you know advice and they've admitted that they they can't sell anything I just I'm always amazed the assumption is that we're all selling loads um, and there are people out there with very slick, very good websites that are well put together, but, um, it's, uh, it's a, it's a difficult thing to do. Um, and I think if, if I didn't have the physical bricks and mortar space, um, yeah, I, I, I'd, I'd really struggle again. Yeah. So it's, it's very important to have that space. Um, yeah. I have to say if, if that's what you want to do, but as I said, it doesn't have to be. You know, it's a nice thing if you can sell a few prints every every now and again. But I would kind of urge people not to put too much pressure on themselves. It's not an indication of whether you're good or whether your work is any good. Uh, it's just usually that you're just not in the, the in the right marketplace for it.
yeah that's some really good advice in what you've just said and like you say it's about getting in front of the right people and yeah photographers aren't often going to buy prints because they tend to get their own prints uh, printed um so yeah that that's very yeah. true it's beautiful to hear that that's worked for you and you've mentioned a number of times there about your books and i wanted to to speak a little bit about this because i think creating books for a photographer is such a a beautiful thing to do it's a wonderful project it's a great way to to showcase your work and and to i guess leave a legacy in many ways as well and I actually went online today and I watched a video by Julian Baird on YouTube who he he loves your work oh, yeah. and he was yeah, yeah mm-hmm. looking at, at your your books and it was nice to to look through them and and see his his view on them and I know he's a listener as well so hi Julian if you're listening um so yeah I, it was nice he's to see good, that he's a good guy he is he's lovely isn't yeah he? yeah yeah, so I just wondered, um, you know, with your books, that's clearly a big part of your work now and something you really enjoy doing. So where did your love for creating books first come from? Uh, I think um, initially when I was in college, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I almost quit art college when I was extremely frustrated at, you know, uh, where I thought the course was going. And it was actually discovering Joel Merowitz's Cape Light book in the library that actually gave me the slightest inkling that perhaps there's a space uh, for landscape photography in this, you know, kind of crazy college setup that I was in. Mm. Um, And I loved, um, that's how I discovered photographers. I mean, you know, uh, I don't want to sound ancient or anything, but I, I, (laughs) you know, I I started in in the era of uh, before Instagram and YouTube and the, you know, there was, there was no internet. So, I mean, if I wanted to to find out about new um, photographers, I had to stand in Waterstones for about an hour and go through every book on the shelves, and uh, which I couldn't afford. But you know, um, so I think I fell in love with with photography through books very early on, and it was through the the light bulb moments that I had when I had been you know moved back to Kerry. I'd been photographing constantly w- without any success or reward or anything I, I i didn't know what i was putting all this effort into this thing for i had you know modest print sales and i had my work in a couple of small galleries um and then i just had a light bulb moment of like why don't i just do a book on this place and that was um you know it was a big idea for me because i had zero profile zero standing and i went to a book publisher and amazingly, I got a publishing contract. And my first book, I spent three years photographing the National Park here in, in Killarney. And it was an incredible experience. And the book was hugely successful. And just it, it set me up for everything after that. It set me up, set me on my way to, to where I am today. And uh, so I fell in love with that process. And at the minute I had finished that, you instantly want to dive back into the next one because it's a lovely way Mm. of working. All of a sudden you have, you have this purpose and you have a real focus, excuse the pun, um, of going out there and working on a project. And I I loved that idea Uh, instead of just aimlessly, because I'm not a great planner. I'm not a great, I'm not one of these guys that can stick to the plan. You know, I'm like driving east one minute and then I, turn the car around and I'm gone west and you know I can be just very erratic in the landscape in the mornings at times uh, but having a having a, a focal kind of point of that you're doing a project in a certain area was really nice um, and then when I had the gallery it's another one of the huge benefits of, of, of having a, a, a gallery you realize that actually if you have a book you have X amount of people that are going to come in the door each day and not all of them can afford a print so there are, it's a saleable product, it's very easily doable. And that for my second book gave me the absolute confidence to just go, right, I'm not doing a book for any market or commercial value, I'm doing the book I wanna make. And the people that come in here will see it and, and uh, they'll know it's my work and they'll know it's my vision. And that was amazing. Uh, that has been, it's been incredible. So, you know, Kingdom, which is my Recent book was done along the same lines and uh, they've been great. Um, you know, books are a, a wonderful way to get your work out there. Um, I have, you know, have a nice system in place now where I, I kind of know what I'm doing. I know how to, I know how to 
work through a project and what I want to say and I love the 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 idea of you know it's not just about individual individual images it's about a narrative you can tell a story you can use images which will never see the light of day on a wall like there's the vast majority of images in a in a book project that I do will never be printed and they're not saleable by themselves but together they form this cohesive um kind of narrative of my love for a place and mm -hmm. that's all I want to get through um so books in that regard are they're very powerful um and they can really really say a huge amount about you as a photographer as an artist uh, more so than a single image posted onto Instagram can and uh you know I I really love that that idea I love being just immersed in it and I I love the the actual physical uh product of it I love I'm quite obsessive about the materials I use and the editing of pictures and the sequencing and all that that's that's something that actually goes back to college days as well we learned we we learned about editing and sequencing and and you know signposting images and those little subtle things and how to balance color with opposing images and so on uh, so it's great um and it's a lovely way of working for me because it it means I'm kind of set off in a direction for two or three years at a time and that's where I am that's what I'm doing and I don't kind of get drawn in different directions. Um, and then that work feeds the gallery. So the, 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 maybe the 10% in, in the book that, are of, that I think would be of interest and that would work in the gallery, that work then feeds that. So it's, um, it's, it's a really nice way of working. And it means mm -hmm. that I'm never under pressure to go out and shoot for the gallery. And then when I, when I work on a book project, I put myself under no pressure at all now. If it's a two-year one, great. If it's a four-year one, that's fine. Um, I've kind of learned that now. You know, it'll be ready when it's ready, and there's no, there's no mad rush. Um, but they're they're great things to do. I would I would advise anyone who's in a position to consider doing it. There's lots of ways you can do it. I mean, I self-publish, uh, which is can be daunting. Uh, you have a couple of companies in the UK that are quite supportive of photographers that will work, you know, with, with photographers and help get their books produced. Um, but for me, self-publishing is the way to go. And um, yeah, it's it, it can be daunting, but it can also be hugely rewarding as well. Mm, beautiful. It's lovely to hear your process. It's definitely a dream of mine to, to get um, a book or two made at some point. It's like you kind of said there, it's about kind of having a co cohesive body of work that all works together and goes under a theme. And it's clear that, that all three of your books have a very clear theme and all the images play into that, which is, is so beautiful. And something you've mentioned a couple of times is this idea of being true to yourself. It's very clear that you don't <clears throat> take images for others. You take images for you. So I wanted to end really on in speaking about you know, how do you feel when you're out there in the landscape? It must be such a, of course, inspiring place for you. But, you know, what does it really do for you when you're out there? God, we could be here all night. Um, on, <laughs> You've on got five minutes. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it, you know, it's, it's something that, uh, it's something that I've, I've kind of dwelled upon and, and dug into a little bit, well, quite a lot, actually, in recent times, um, you know, trying to answer that question of what is it that draws me out here all the time? And even even if I didn't have a purpose of, you know, a book project or if I didn't have a gallery, if I wasn't working at it as my living, I'd still be doing it with as much passion. Mm. And, um, it, it, you know, it, there's there's many levels on it for me. Um, I, uh, I had, you know, uh, I think I listened to your chat with, Simon Baxter and I was just amazed at the parallels in our story it was uncanny um you know where you know I had you know a kind of an epiphany type moment where I just I made so much connections with what I'm doing now with you know the early part of my life which was you know full of chaos and you know our domestic life was was quite difficult and so on and I sought solace as a young teenager in nature and, mm. you know, started just spending time out in nature and peace and quiet and just kind of getting away from the madness at times. And I had kind of almost completely forgotten about that aspect of my life 
only for you know me to constantly be nagging at myself and asking myself why what is it about this that why am I like this why why do I enjoy this so much why do I why am I so comfortable spending hours days by myself wet cold you know it doesn't matter and yeah that that kind of realization came to me was that I was drawing I made a direct line between you know the guy I am now to a 13 year old kid just kind of getting so much uh, the solace and bit of break and a kind of a, a cathartic process through nature and realizing that that's actually something that subconsciously I have needed my whole life. Mm. Um, some people are quite happy. I mean, I was born and raised in the city, but my God, I, this is where I needed to be my whole life. Um, and I, th I shudder to think what my life would have been like if I, if I hadn't had that. Um, I, I get to go out and it's just this instant, you know, depressurizing zone. Everything just dissipates. Uh, you have so much time and space to, you, you don't even realize you're working through stuff, but yet you are. And at the same time, you're taking pictures and you're being creative. Um, so, I mean, there's so much that goes on in my head and there's so much that goes on, you know, in the process of me making images. Um, the one thing I never do is go out and think that I'm going to make a picture, uh, or that, I go, that I go out uh, with a purpose. It's very rare that I actually go and know what I'm, know even where I'm going that day. Um, you know, in our house, it's just called heading out. And my wife says to me, are you heading out tomorrow? Are you heading out in the morning? I say, yeah, you know, where are you going? I have no idea. <laughs> and I literally get to the driveway and I'll turn left or right. And that's the way I love it. And I'm, I'm kind of guided by it. And some days are wonderful. Uh, the days you come back with nothing, they're equally as good because they just inform my decision process and everything for the next shoot. Um, so the, it's, there's, there's a lot that goes on. Um, and it's just a very, very special time. And I've, I didn't realize how much um, I needed it until you stop doing it for a while, until you, mm -hmm. until you hit a busy period in your life and you realize you haven't been out in a month or two months and you're suddenly getting cranky and you're an annoying everyone. And, uh, you know, my wife just tells me to get your camera and off you go. And uh, you kind of, you go and reset. Um, but that realization of the deeper connection <coughs> to it and, and how, how, you know, everything is tied into different aspects of our character and our life experience and everything. Um, it, it's, it's far more common than I thought. I, you know, I've kind of existed in a bubble for many years, but having gotten to know so many other photographers and talking with people and listening to, listening to other photographers des describe their experiences and their motivations, I've realized it's quite a common thing, mm -hmm. um, f especially for landscape photographers, because, you know, uh, for me anyway, it's quite a solitary uh, pursuit that's the way I like it I have no problem I'm not I wouldn't regard myself as an introvert um, there are parts of me that are definitely introverted but um, you know I love being social I love being a social person but I absolutely have no problem and some of my best times are just out there by myself in the landscape mm -hmm. um, so I, I feel it's I feel it's it's something that you know has been miraculously prescribed to me without me ever knowing it, um, and I feel very lucky to have been just guided by pure whether it's by fate or chance or design that that's how I've what I've ended up doing. Um, I think I'd I think I probably would have struggled with different aspects of my life um, had I not had I not gone down this road. And I feel very fortunate to have a right, uh, a nice, even, even kind of balance with, with regard to, you know, even the most difficult times in life when, you know, you lose loved ones or work is crazy or whatever. Uh, the landscape has been where I've always gone. And mm. uh, it's always where everything just seems to be a little less uh, difficult, uh, a little easier to manage. And suddenly you're out there and you're just looking at, the beauty of nature and this incredible place you you live um things come into perspective pretty quickly and you realize actually you know it's going to be okay and uh yeah. i think that's a, a hugely powerful thing mm. um everyone should do it 
Yes, yes. Oh, it's so beautiful. I love to hear that your connection there and how there's many overlaps between you and Simon and that you really resonated with his story. And it's lovely to hear that photography's got you through those hard times and it's given you that, that release as well, I guess. And, and it's just, it's beautiful. There's so many parallels to many of the stories that we've, that's been told on this podcast. And just hearing that at the end there, along with how successful what you're doing is and how you, you're living your dream. It's it's so beautiful. So I just want to say a huge mm-hmm. thank you for your time today, Norman. I will put all the links in the show notes below to your website and your social medias. So if anyone's coming over to, to County Kerry and they want to visit your gallery, they can find all the information there. And of course, if anybody's interested in buying your books, they can find all that information too. So yeah, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. No, oh, thank you. I, I really enjoyed it. Thanks. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this week's podcast. It really does mean the world to me. If you'd like to get further involved with Photographic Connections, including joining our online members community, you can find all the details at photographicconnections.com. And now that this podcast has come to an end, there's only one thing left for you to do. It's time to pick up your camera and head outdoors. There's so many incredible photographic opportunities just waiting for you to discover.